so today we'll be discussing about two important topics uh, what do you call classification matrix and when we learn a good classifier even the data is imbalanced so data imbalance meaning when you have uh, it's not every category has similar amount of data available you know so lo let's go back to some of the classification tasks that we have already learned and one of them is classification of uh, breast cancer and we have tried few different models and in our, all our experiments we were reporting uh, accuracy as our classification metric okay so the definition of accuracy is um, how many of your predictions were correct uh, so the number of correct predictions divided by number of correct and incorrect predictions so that is the intuitive definition of accuracy now the question is that is accuracy is a good method and it turned out to be we will explain that not always accuracy can be a good metric so what are the other matrices we need to learn and use in our respective applications you know so that will be the main focus of uh, this discussion and before going to that, I want to also first uh, show you another classification task, what you call uh, digit recognition. So here we are talking about optical character recognition and we have a very well uh, known data set, what you call MNIS. And uh, we have um, put forward the uh, link so you can go and learn more about the data set. But uh, this is a very well known data set for the people doing uh, classification modeling and also doing computer vision uh, tasks. So uh, for those of you guys who are not familiar with computer vision data, nothing to worry because we can see that um, each digit is actually uh, represented um, through a 8 by 8 matrix and if you just uh, transform this matrix into one dimensional vector then the data would be of size 64. So you have um, about all about 1800 um, instances for 10 categories and each uh, feature each uh, data point is uh, of 64 value vectors you know? and if i look at uh, some of the data points you can see that uh, what these are the units we call pixel so you have 64 big bit uh, pixels that represents one uh, data point and as I was saying that uh, this is of 64 sides and uh, um, you have uh, 10 categories, you know. So let's look at again our their mean and maximum value. So you can see that the minimum value is zero, but the maximum value is 16. So we need to normalize our data as we did for the other tasks. So here we did the normalization. Now we are running a logistic regression classifier. And here we are looking at their accuracy just uh, the definition we have seen at the beginning of this lecture so in summary we are saying that uh, for a 50 percent training and 50 percent test test split the logistic regression classifier is doing 94 percent um, accurate uh, classification you know and keep in mind that this is a 10 class classification task and here we are just showing the confusion matrix so we can see that um, the classifier is uh, doing fairly good but uh, not that good for certain classes so here we are seeing that the class 0 class 2 these are doing really good but some of the classes for example class 5 where the model is doing 90 percent um, that's correct classification one of the ideas of the confusion confusion matrix is to show you where i mean like in what cases the get model is getting confused and here we can see that uh, for digit 5 it is getting confused with um, uh, digit 3 and also with digit 8 you know uh, but it is uh, quite intuitive because 10 writing pattern of 5 and 3 is kind of close to one another and that's why uh, here we lost some accuracy but the main thing is here we see that uh, somewhat the model is doing um, fairly good for most of the categories you know and the results are uh, quite close to one another now let's go back to our presentation slide and we want to actually convince us that we shouldn't use accuracy as our metric for all cases you know although it looks to be intuitive and one of the examples 
we can connect back to our earlier example and let's look at the results of our best cancer classification task and here again we are doing a confusion matrix so here the value counts and here we just converted those values into probabilities and let's put a little bit attention to understand the the numbers here so we are saying that when a patient has a cancer the model was quite good identifying that the patient actually had the the, the disease you know but when the other case, like for example, patient didn't had a cancer, but uh, the, the, the model was asking that uh, you have a cancer, you know. So this can be really catastrophic. We are doing um, false alarm. But, uh, even some people doesn't have any cancer, the model is actually telling that you have the, the disease, you know. So this is uh, very alarming and that's why for these kind of cases, we cannot use accuracy metric as our chosen metric you know because uh, it can be catastrophic for these kind of problems we cannot use um, the accuracy as our metric you know? so what are the other choices that we'll be discussing we can have an another definition of accuracy uh, using the confusion metric here i am showing um, uh, the confusion metrics for binary classification case and uh, the y axis values are actually the true values positive and negative and then the x axis values are the predicted values positive and negative so you can see that the green square areas you know so here we i'm saying that um, the label was positive and uh, the classifier was able to uh, predict it correctly as a positive so this is a positive positive math and um, the true level was positive, but the classifier actually predicted as a negative. So it's a, a false a negative prediction. And then you have a correct negative negative uh, math. And here the label was negative, but uh, the classifier predicted as uh, positive. So this is what we call false positive. Okay. So we can use these four cell values to define uh, accuracy metrics. So all the positive, positive maths and negative, negative maths are actually the correct predictions. And all the four values, if you add up and then divide, then it becomes the accuracy. Why I'm showing an alternative definition of uh, accuracy? Because we will keep quickly realize that we can define other matrices by um, taking part of these values you know and uh, you might be aware of or uh, you might have heard um, some of the uh, terms for example precision uh, recall f1 score uh, but again we'll try to understand by taking the confusion matrix as a reference so it becomes easier for you to understand so precision is actually you are only considering all your positive prediction levels true positives divided by true positive plus um, false positives you know this is some internal meaning uh, that we will learn slowly but if we can summarize from this particular figure we are saying how many of my positive predictions are right predictions some people also call it as positive predictive value you know likewise uh, the, uh, the recall some people call it as sensitivity and uh, this is purely through the definition of the true levels you know so how how many of my true levels i was able to correctly uh, classify as uh, true positives you know so this is again uh, true positives divided by uh, true positive uh, plus um, false negatives you know so you can see the the level were positive but uh, the the classifier actually uh, classified as a negative you know i am actually measuring that how good my classifier is to identify the positives and here uh, there is another metric what we call f1 score so f1 score you can you can see the function of precision and recall you can be you can be good at precision but you might not be good um, in terms of recall other way might also be possible that you are very good in recall but you are not that good in precision but um, usually the uh, expectation is that uh, a classifier should do both in um, having a good precision and also with a good recall and this is one metric actually that uh, captures both you know 
if you go to wikipedia page this is the same definition that we have seen using the confusion matrix but here they are explaining in terms of information retrieval as the base concept you know so precision is uh, you can quickly connect that how many of your retrieved documents are actually right just like how many of my predictions are right and uh, the recall is how many of uh, the right documents were retrieved by a retrieval system again here how many of the true levels were identified as true by the the classifier that we have seen in the last slide using the confusion matrix if you summarize we we already know about accuracy but now we have like some other metrics such as precision recall and f1 score so we have a much more wider um, coverage of a few different uh, matrices and we can use these matrices to actually uh, better validate some of our uh, classification algorithm but again these four matrices that will cover everything but if you take uh, this matrix as your reference the confusion matrix then you can explain most of the other matrices as well uh, so in summary we learned it is not necessary that always the accuracy should be used as your matrix because some of the tasks such as uh, medical uh, disease prediction we don't, don't want to miss important uh, cases for example we don't want to inaccurately uh, uh, ask a person that you have a cancer or the other way uh, we don't want to miss a person with cancer but uh, not identifying that properly and for the credit card assignment problem we don't want to just give a credit card to everyone you know uh, because that might be very risky for the business you know so you have many other applications where you need to actually properly choose a, a metric that fits your your, your, your target okay